The Queen carried out a personal investiture despite still being on her Scottish holidays. The court circular, which shows every official engagement carried out by senior members of the firm, recorded on Monday Her Majesty had met Peter Troughton, a family friend and member of the Royal Collection Trust, RCT. During their private audience, the Queen invested Mr. Troughton with the insignia of a commander of the Royal Victorian Order. He had been listed among the recipients of a CVO in the Queen's 2021 New Year's Honours. Investiture ceremonies are usually carried out by the Queen, Prince Charles, Prince William or Princess Anne at a royal palace. They are normally attended by groups but the Queen has occasionally bestowed these honours during solo ceremonies to people she is close to. Moreover, in July 2020, she led a very special investiture in the quadrangle at Windsor Castle to honour Captain Tom Moore and pay tribute to his extraordinary fundraising effort in the midst of the first national lockdown. Mr. Troughton has been seen in public with the Queen in the past. As noted by royal blogger Gertz Royals, he joined Her Majesty in 2018 at Royal Ascot. On the fourth day at the Ascot Racecourse, Mr. Troughton joined the Queen, the Earl of Snowdon and the Monarch's Racing Manager in the carriage to take part in the traditional procession ahead of the races. The Queen travelled to Balmoral for her first summer holiday without Prince Philip on July 23. While there, she is believed to have been visited by a number of relatives including Sarah Ferguson and Prince Andrew. In mid-August, Princess Eugenie was spotted arriving at Aberdeen Airport likely to join the monarch at the castle. And as August ended, Vanity Fair reported the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their three children had spent the last week of the month with the Queen in Scotland. The Queen is expected to remain at Balmoral, until the beginning of October. But, as she signalled with this week's investiture, while in Scotland she will carry out important engagements. On October 2 she will attend the opening ceremony of the Scottish Parliament, accompanied by Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. This important engagement marks the first of a series of face-to-face -face royal duties by Her Majesty. A few days later, she will return to Buckingham Palace to launch the Queen's Baton Relay for the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. On October 12, accompanied by Princess Anne, she will head to Westminster Abbey for a service of thanksgiving to mark the centenary of the Royal British Legion. Other events already penciled in the Queen's diary for October include the attendance at the opening ceremony of the Senna and a reception at Windsor Castle. The Queen will be in Scotland once again in November when she will attend a reception on the occasion of the COP26 summit in Glasgow. While her diary already appears full for October, Buckingham Palace hasn't announced in advance any royal outings for the Queen this month. The Chelsea Flower Show will take place next week after being pushed back in May to avoid Covid restrictions. Since 1952, the Queen has attended every single edition of the show with the exception of two. But, given she is still in Scotland, it is unlikely she will make an appearance at the London-based event this year. Duke of Sussex, 36, co-hosted the virtual event with Jill Biden. The Royal was expected to appear in person for the 2021 Warrior Games in Orlando, Florida, but the in-person event was cancelled due to COVID safety concerns. The 36-year-old prince appeared alongside the First Lady, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Ken Fisher, CEO of Fisher House Foundation. While speaking at the event honoring those taking part in the Warrior Games, Harry said the pandemic has flipped life upside down for so many people. I am so sorry that we're not all together at the Warrior Games where we should be, the Prince said. The pandemic has certainly changed or flipped life upside down for so many people. Harry founded the Invictus Games in the UK after being inspired by the US Warrior Games. I will never forget that first visit that I had to the Warrior Games, which inspired me to create the Invictus Games and the Invictus Games never would have been created had I not been inspired by every single one of you, and your companions, and the families for everything that you give to the service of this country," the Royal said at the virtual event. While the Duke and Duchess stepped away from being working members of the Royal Family, Harry remains a private patron to the Invictus Games, the Foundation's CEO has said. A statement from CEO Dominic Reed said, 
we are proud to have the Duke of Sussex as our patron. The Invictus Games was founded by him, it has been built on his ideas, and he remains fully committed to both the Games and to the Invictus Games Foundation. A press release from the White House stated the Warrior Games share a deep bond with Harry's Invictus Games. Jill Biden was also expected to appear in the in-person event before it got cancelled. Speaking at the start of the virtual event, First Lady Jill Biden said, 20 years ago our world broke apart and the shockwaves of 9-11 continue today, but as the President and I visited the September 11th memorials this weekend I was reminded of the humanity that shined through the inhumanity of that day. There was a call to defend the values we hold dear as we waged a global war on terror and a courageous group of men and women stepped forward to say me, I will go. And that includes you, Harry, you live by a simple principle, serve together, recover together. Taylor Snedden, of Falkirk, underwent intensive chemotherapy for leukemia last year, as she bravely battled the illness. As a result, the youngster was forced to shield during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic. She was photographed kissing her father through a window during the lockdown by her mother, Linda. Mila's dad, Scott, had to go into work and was afraid that he might infect his daughter with the lethal virus, so was forced to live apart from his family. The photo, entitled Shielding Mila, was one of the 100 images included in the Duchess of Cambridge's book Hold Still, a portrait of our nation in 2020. Kate, 39, later spoke to little Mila on the phone, before meeting her for tea at Holyrood in May this year. Linda revealed to Hello! Magazine how she was struck by the Duchess' caring and considerate nature. I can't put into words how remarkable the Duchess of Cambridge has been, she said. She was so caring and considerate. I got a real sense of her being a mother in the way she spoke to Mila. There were challenges, because of all the Covid restrictions and wearing masks, but she said she wanted to give Mila a big hug. Mila wore a tiny crown and matching pink shoes for her Holyrood meeting with Kate. For her part, the Duchess of Cambridge stayed true to her promise to wear pink, Mila's favourite colour. Which royal is the keenest gardener? The three royals with green thumbs, reveal so proud of you. Kate Middleton lords Emma Rajakanyu's record Brea. Spotlight how Kate Middleton made royal history with wedding tiara choice, in sight, Kate wore Amy plus M's silk shirt dress which featured a dipped midi hemline and pleated detailing, with tan heels and a floral face covering. In an interview with Lorraine today after the rendezvous, Linda said, It was an incredible experience and we were really well taken care of and memories that we TMLL treasure for a lifetime. It was such a surreal experience, where we were seated as their guests was just phenomenal and it's been very much appreciated. After a difficult time, Siders close to Prince Andrew and his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson, both 61, say the cohabiting couple could remarry. Speaking to Vanity Fair, an insider revealed the close couple have been living side by side over the pandemic and still love each other a great deal. The source said, Sarah and Andrew have been closer than ever in the past year. They still love and care for each other a great deal, and have been living together during the pandemic," added the source. It has rekindled something and I can see a second wedding happening if it all goes Andrew's way. The Duke of York and Fergie initially tied the knot at Westminster Abbey in 1986. The couple then went on to have two daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, before they separated in 1992. They officially divorced in 1996. Ferdy told a Polish paper on Wednesday that no matter what, her wedding day in 1986 was one of the best days of her life. She said, divorce is one thing, but my heart is my oath, my obligation. But the Duchess of York has been pushed in recent times to reveal the details of her relationship with her former husband. Speaking to The Telegraph's Camilla Tomini about the prospect of remarriage, Fergie said, all I can say, is that we are happy with the way we are right now. We always say, we are the most contented divorced couple in the world, the 61-year-old added. 
we tm re divorced to each other, not from each other. We are co-parents who support each other and believe that family is everything. I tm am proud of the job we have done together in bringing up our children and sustaining a strong family unit. Our bywords are communication, compromise and compassion. Despite 25 years passing since their divorce, the Duke and Duchess of York have lived together for some time. The pair live together at a 30-room grade 2 listed property at the Royal Lodge. In 2015, Sarah Ferguson said, Andrew and I, we TM re the happiest, divorced couple in the world extraordinary, really, isn't TMT it. We live in the same house, but then, it TMS a big house, so that TMS okay. But I think it TMS really good that we believe in compromise and communication and compassion. And family, 